Keep yourself in the loop of everything football on the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast. The latest news on and off the field, be it college football, Big Ten, SCC, Big 12, Pac-12, ACC, to the NFL. We've got you covered. Listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast. Welcome to the GSMC Football Podcast. This episode is brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. And as always, I am your host, Jesse Tapia. Boy, oh boy. Feels like Christmas Day, let me tell you. Alright, free agency hasn't even started yet. Free agency has not even started yet. It's supposed to start tomorrow, Wednesday, the 14th, and everyone is going everywhere. Alright? So many different things to talk about for this show. We're going to have to space it out from today to Thursday. All right. So much going on. All right. So it's going to be a fun couple of shows this week. We got Sammy Watkins in Kansas City. We got Danny Amendola, Albert Wilson in Miami. The Browns did a whole bunch of stuff on Friday we haven't even talked about. We'll be talking about that in the first segment. Richard Sherman plays for the 49ers. Just think about that, all right? Think about all like the rivalry between the Seahawks and 49ers when the 49ers were a good team. Think about Richard Sherman, the Crabtree incident, the interview with Aaron Andrews. Remember that, all right? And now that guy is playing for the 49ers, all right? So we're going to be talking about that. Let's see what else we got going on. The Bears, they're making moves. Kirk Cousins looks like he's found his team. Turns out, yeah, Jesse Boy was right. All right, looks like I got my pick right. Talked about, remember, a couple weeks ago when I talked about how the Vikings not franchising Keenum or Bridgewater meant they were getting Kirk Cousins. Yeah, turns out, yeah, I got that one right. I deserve. I want the credit for that one. I want ESPN. I want NBC Sports. I want Fox. I want them all to credit me. All right, I'm the source. I'm the one who got it right. I deserve the credit. All right, time for. That's my big scoop right there. All right, so that happened. Let's see what else we got going on. Jimmy Graham plays for the Packers now. Jordy Nelson got cut. Uh, and a bunch of different quarterbacks went to a bunch of different teams. So there is a lot going on. We're probably going to have to break it up division by division to be talk, to talk about it. So, I mean, we're going to be definitely be talking about for the first segment, we're going to talk about all the moves that happened over the weekend. We're going to talk about what the Browns did and talk about the 49ers, all right? Talk about pretty much, yeah, that's what the first segment will be about. Then, um... For the second segment, let's talk. This is tough. We got a lot going on. Let's talk the NFC North. Third segment, we'll be talking AFC East. And then the fourth segment, we'll be talking AFC West. All right. So, for like I said, the second segment, NFC North, we'll talk Allen Robinson to the Bears, Kirk Cousins to Minnesota, Jimmy Graham to the Packers. All right. Detroit's talking to DeMarco Murray. So, we'll talk about a whole bunch of that. AFC East for the third segment. We'll be talking about like what exactly the Dolphins are doing as far as their moves in the uh, offseason so far. Um, like I said, they traded Landry to the Browns. I mean, it's just a whole lot going on with that team. I'm still kind of confused as to what their plan is because like they signed Albert Wilson and uh, Danny Amendola, but they, so they have to like, they, they can't just like they have to do something as far as those receivers go, unless like the rest of the receivers on that team go, unless they're just thinking we're just going to keep them all. So we'll be talking about that. Let's see what else we got going on for the AFC East. The Jets, we'll be talking about them bringing back uh, Josh McCown instead of Teddy Bridgewater. It looks like they were look, earlier today, it looked like they were going to be signing Teddy Bridgewater to a deal. And all of a sudden, Josh McCown's coming back for another year. So we got that. The Buffalo Bills, I mean, they haven't signed their veteran quarterback yet. So we'll be doing that. Doing the Patriots, lost Danny Mandola, see what they're trying to do as far as it goes. And then, like I said, for the fourth segment, we got the Chiefs signing Sammy Watkins. And we got the Broncos signing Case Keenum. Maybe we'll fit in a couple of other moves. We'll do AFC West and pretty much anything else that we missed. All right. So that's how the show is going to go today. All right. It's going to be a fun one. But either way, let's get into it. We had a bunch happen over the weekend. Like the Browns on Friday just went crazy. Absolutely crazy. All right. And here's what they did. They traded for Jarvis Landry, gave up a fourth round pick this year and a seventh round pick next year. All right. They traded for Tyrod Taylor, gave up a third round pick this year to the Bills. And they traded for, I think it's Demarius Randall from the Packers. All right. Gave up Deshaun Kaiser for him. 
and a pick. I, can't, I think it was a pick and a Sean Kaiser. I can't remember exactly what the pick was or even if it was a pick. But either way, the Browns did a lot of things on Friday. All right, didn't have a chance to talk about it because our show, last show we did was on Thursday. All right, so here we are talking about it now over the weekend. All right, so the Browns are doing a thing. All right, the Browns are doing a good thing. The Browns have been a bad team for about 20 years. All right, like I said, someone write the book of the Cleveland Browns, The 20 Years of Misery. Someone write that book. I will buy that book. All right, I just want 5% of whatever you make off of it because it's my idea. But either way, the Browns, they're starting to get smart, it looks like, okay? I like what the Browns are doing. You bring in a Jarvis Landry. You bring in, um, who else? They bring in a Tyrod Taylor and you bring in Randall. You need secondary help, so that's where Randall comes in. As far as receivers go, I mean, Landry is going to be in the slot, and he's a solid, probably the best slot receiver in this league. All right, you got Gordon, you got Coleman, you got Landry in the slot now. You got Njoku playing tight end, pretty solid receiving corpse there. Then you bring in Tyrod Taylor. I like that move. I really like Tyrod Taylor as a quarterback. All right, this was good for Taylor here. The Buffalo Bills they never wanted Taylor for some reason. I have no clue why. The guy took him to the playoffs this year. All right. He had no receivers to throw to. Yes, I know Calvin Calvin Benjamin played for that team. If anything, that just sharpens my point even more. All right. LaShawn McCoy. Yeah. Great running back. Top five for sure. That was help that um, Tyrod Taylor had. But other than that, I mean, he really had no one to throw to. Charles Clay, I guess, showed up time and time. Um, time to time, but other than that, I mean, it was really Tyrod Taylor um, leading that offense, and LaShawn McCoy pretty, pretty much putting the rest on his back as far as the points go. All right, so now he's in Cleveland, and Cleveland's being smart. Now you could take Saquon Barkley with the number one pick, all right? Now you have a quarterback to play this year in order to let the one whoever you draft develop. You could have your choice now. You don't need to go out and draft a quarterback make him a starter week one. You could draft a Sam Darnold, who I think that they should. I think you should draft Sam Darnold, who I think overall has the most talent. I think Josh Rosen is the most NFL-ready quarterback. But Josh Rosen has all the talent he needs, but has to develop it. Right, and I think that's perfect for a team like Cleveland now that you have a Tyrod Taylor. You draft Darnold or even draft Josh Allen. Let him sit for a year. They're ready to go next year probably. All right. So it's all working out extremely well for Cleveland right now. They're doing something that the past front offices haven't done before. With the past regimes, that's a, that's a word that the NFL likes to throw around now. The past regimes, all right? Now they're being smart. They're actually using those picks, doing something with them, and getting good compensation for it. Like I said, Jarvis Landry, best slot receiver in the league, all right? Josh Gordon, when he's got his head on straight, one of the best receivers in the league. Corey Coleman, when he's healthy, a solid little player there, all right? And Joku, I think that, um, I think Njoku could be a top tight end in this league with a little bit more development. And as far as that defense goes, got to fix up the secondary some more. But you got a solid defensive line. You got solid linebackers. Cleveland could very well make the playoffs if they draft, uh, if they draft a running back, if they draft Barkley. If they draft Barkley, I think they can make the playoffs, all right? Believe it or not. I'm not saying they're a lock for the playoffs, but they'll be competing. Cleveland is going to be that good, I believe. All right, I really like what they're doing, and they still got a whole bunch, bunch more picks to make, as far as the draft goes. So, I mean, Cleveland's being smart. I think they're fine. They're going to win at least seven, eight games this season, at least. And I'm more so inclined to think that they're going to win eight games. All right, really love what that team is doing out there. They're finally being smart. And as far as the division goes, Pittsburgh, yeah, no doubt, they're still the best team in that division. They're not even on Cleveland's level. Can't even touch, or Cleveland's not even on them, their level. Cleveland can't touch uh, Pittsburgh right now. So I mean, you got the Je uh, Cleveland, who's probably the second best team in that division. Baltimore is going down. I think John Harbaugh is probably going to be this is probably going to be his last year in Baltimore. All right, and as far as the Bengals go, I mean, I have no clue what they're doing in Cincinnati. All right, but either way, they're doing something. But either way, like I said, Cleveland, second best team in that division, could very well make the playoffs. All right, AFC is kind of weak this season. You got the AFC South; it's going to be a nice little tough division. Probably going to get two teams into the playoffs there. AFC West, I mean, Cleveland's going to have to, uh, as far as the wild card position goes, you're going to have to compete with teams like the Broncos. Uh, yeah, team like the Broncos, as far as the AFC East goes right now, Miami's got a little plan. They seem to be working out. Not really sure if it's going to work out or what they got going on there. Buffalo, New York, don't really understand what they got going on. And like I said, NFC North, it's Cleveland and Pittsburgh. After that, 
I mean, no one really knows what's going on in Baltimore, Cincinnati. So Cleveland does have a chance at making the playoffs. So we'll see how it all goes there. And like I said, moving on to the next topic, Richard Sherman. All right. Richard Sherman is a San Francisco 49ers. All right. The guy that called Crabtree a sorry receiver after that. What was it? A playoff game? I think it was. Screamed at Aaron Andrews during that interview. And poor Aaron Andrews must have been terrified. All right. That dude was just in, just loud in the face. All right. One of the greatest interviews of all time, though. So you had that. And pretty much 49er fans and 49, the 49ers in general hated Richard Sherman. All right. With Richard Sherman going to the 49ers, I saw some fans saying, I uh, don't really like it because they don't really like Richard Sherman. I don't know how you can't like Richard Sherman. All right. Yeah, the guy's outspoken, but that's not even a problem. All right. But either way, he's playing for San Francisco, and it's a smart move by San Francisco. All right. You bring in Richard Sherman, you still need some secondary help, but nonetheless, you can go out and you can get a linebacker with that ninth pick, or you could try and draft Quentin Nelson if he makes it out to number nine, which I'm not too sure because that dude might be the best, one of the best players in the draft. I don't see him getting past uh, Chicago, honestly, if he does make it that far. All right. So you got that. I think if I'm the 49ers, you got to draft Tremaine Edmonds or Roquan Smith. You're not sure what's going on with Reuben Foster with his little legal matter. So there's that. But like I said, with the addition of Richard Sherman, you don't have to draft a Denzel Ward or a Josh Jackson now because you got him out there. And it's kind of interesting to see this. Like, yeah, they brought in Richard Sherman, but this doesn't necessarily fix anything at all. In order to see if it fixes a little hole that they have on the team, you got to see how Richard Sherman performs. We're not going to know until he's playing. The guy is 30 years old, coming off of a torn Achilles injury. All right, That's pretty hard to do at that age in professional sports. To us, to the average normal person, 30 years is still pretty young. But in the NFL, that means you're getting old. All right, And for a cornerback to have an Achilles injury where you got to follow receivers and make the same cuts that they're making, that's going to be tough at that age. All right, so it's going to be interesting to see really if this pays off for San Francisco. Yeah, on paper, it looks like it could be nice, but I mean, we're not really going to know until he's on the field. And I was talking about last week, how I thought Richard Sherman would probably end up in New England. I'm not sure why I didn't think he would for sure end up in San Francisco. I mean, Richard Sherman, outspoken, all right, the type of guy where probably sees himself as the underdog, got a bet on himself. That's why he's his um, own agent. Richard Sherman does not have an agent. And that's one thing too that kind of where he messes up on. This contract that he has with um, San Francisco is more so uh, I'm betting on myself type of deal. He's only getting like three, five million guaranteed, I believe it is. I mean, that's cool. You want to be a story. You want to bet on yourself. But how about you use your head, get an agent, actually get paid real guaranteed money. All right. And that's one thing too. NFL players believe in themselves way too much. Go out and get paid. That's what it's all about in this league. All right. Don't give me the whole, oh, it's loyalty. No. Or it's, oh, he's betting on himself. No. Go get paid. All right. Because what if Richard Sherman doesn't work out? Dude's only making three, five million dollars. All right. San Francisco, I think, could cut him after this year and not have to pay him anything if he doesn't work out this season with the team. So I get the whole, oh, I want to um, bet on myself and all that. That's cool. But eventually you got to use your head and get paid. All right. And Richard Sherman is like really, truly betting on himself where he did have safeties who in Seattle who pretty much had his back the entire time. Seattle, um, Sherman's been with Seattle the entire, um, his entire career. Now it's going to be interesting to see how he plays with a new team. All right. It's been pretty much the question has been brought up. Is Richard Sherman a truly great cornerback or has he had Earl Thomas and um, Cam Chancellor save his back the entire time there, make him look better than what he is? Now we're going to find out. Now we're going to find out how good Richard Sherman truly is. I think he's a good cornerback, but now is the time where we're going to find out uh, maybe he's all hype. Maybe he's actually that good. So it's going to be interesting to see, but it's going to be fun watching him play against the, San, uh, against the Seattle Seahawks for those two games a season. One of those games is going to end up on Sunday night or Monday night. That's no doubt about that. I'm probably going to have one of them on Thursday night too. So we'll see how it all ends up. But yeah, this weekend in football, crazy. We got more to talk about for the show. We're going to talk about the AFC, uh, NFC North in the next segment. Kirk Cousins in Minnesota. Allen Robinson's in Chicago. Jimmy Graham's in Green Bay. All right. We got a whole lot going on there. All right. So stay tuned and we'll be right back. 
Are you looking for help for your fantasy football team? Check out the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast. Get today's best advice on who to start, who to sit, even who you should draft. From sleeper picks to red hot lineups, they got it all covered for you. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash fantasy dash football dash podcast. We'll cover traditional leagues, dynasty, PPR, even IDP leagues. When you need fantasy help, there's just one show to hit up. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow Follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. SMC football podcast basically just spent that first segment talking about uh, what we talk about the Cleveland Browns all the moves they've made like what they're doing out there they could be a playoff team if they draft Saquon Barkley that's no doubt all right the Cleveland Browns do have a good team now all right Tyrod Taylor took the Bills to the playoffs last year with no weapons now he has a bunch of good players around him all right by far a way better supporting cast than he had in Buffalo. Yes, I know that LaShawn McCoy played running back there. But, I mean, they had no receivers whatsoever. All right, now we'll continue to beat the drum that, or die on the hill that Kelvin Benjamin is no better than a number two receiver in this league. All right, he's just not a number one. That's just facts. All right, it is what it is. So, we talked about the Browns, talked about Richard Sherman going to the 49ers. Bit of a weird sight there because of the fact that the 49ers and Seahawks have hated each other for a while. Fans don't like Richard Sherman in San Francisco, but nonetheless, now they got to learn to love him. All right, so we talked about that. Now, we're going to get on to today's portion of free agency. Kirk Cousins, playing for Minnesota, it's looking like. All right. Uh, Allen Robinson, now going to be the number one receiver that Mitch Trubisky needed. Okay. Jimmy Graham. Playing for Green Bay now. Is he going to be better than what he was in Seattle? I'm not too sure. But either way, we're going to talk about it. All right. So like you said, if you've noticed, this segment is going to be just an NFC North segment. Next up, we'll be talking AFC East. Fourth segment, we'll be talking a bit AFC West. And pretty much anything else in free agency. Because like I said, we got Sam Bradford going to the Cardinals. Uh, we got... Josh McCown, uh, we're going to talk, talk about Josh McCown in the next segment. Let's see, where else? we got a couple of other things we got to cover. But either way, I mean, we got two shows to do. it. we got a whole bunch of, like I said, free agency doesn't really truly start till tomorrow, technically. So, I mean, there's going to be a whole bunch more. we got a Dominican Sue who's going to be free, who is going to be a free agent. So, it's going to be interesting to see how it all is going to play out. All right? But either way, here we are. Let's talk some NFC North football. Could very well be one of the best divisions of football this season. Let's start off with the... Vikings. Let's 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 uh let's toot my own horn real quick. All right. Remember, two weeks ago, if you were listening to the podcast, I think it was two weeks ago. Either way, I said, "Oh, the Vikings aren't going to be franchising Teddy Bridgewater or Case Keenum." After that, I said, basically, I talked about how they wouldn't be doing that if they didn't think they had a shot, a true shot at Kirk Cousins. After that, I proceeded to say. I want the credit if he goes there. Lock it down. He's going there. All right. I said that. Sure enough, where is Kirk Cousins going to be ending up? Minnesota. All right. Not New York. Not Denver. Not Arizona. Adam Schefter reported it's more. He's going to be signing in Minnesota. All right. If Rich, if Adam Schefter lied to all of us, I apologize. But it's looking like it's Minnesota. All right. Looks like he's going to be getting a three-year, eighty-four million dollar. Fully guaranteed deal, all right? And that's just crazy to me. In what world do we live in where Kirk Cousins is the first player in NFL history to get a fully guaranteed deal, all right? Did I miss the years where Kirk Cousins was a top five quarterback in the league, let alone the best quarterback in the league in order to get a fully guaranteed deal, all right? I understand that Kirk Cousins is a good quarterback. You could probably say he's top 10. He's probably that 10th spot or 11 looking in. But either way, where did all this value for him come from? Like, honestly, 
Why do we value Kirk Cousins so highly? All right. Why? I don't, I'm not even sure. All right. It just, I have no clue where it came from. It all started when San Francisco needed a quarterback. Remember, they were supposed to be the guys who were going to be getting Kirk Cousins, but then uh, Washington franchised them a whole bunch of times. And maybe it's just San Francisco started it by throwing it out there that they were going to be giving him the most money in NFL history for a quarterback. And maybe like that just stuck with it. People just ran with it. All right. It's one of those things where, I mean, somehow it came true. It's going to come true. All right. Kirk Cousins is a good quarterback, but I don't understand. Like he's not in Aaron, He's not on Aaron Rodgers' level. He's barely. I'm not even sure you could say he's on Matt Ryan's level. But nonetheless, here he is getting paid. All right. And I'm not trying to knock Kirk Cousins too much. Like I said, I do think he's a good quarterback. And we're going to get into what he means for Minnesota as far as this season goes. But come on now. Are we, is this really happening? We're really going to go through with this? We're really going to give Kirk Cousins all this money? All right. I mean, Kirk Cousins getting $84 million guaranteed. Rodgers has to get way more than that fully guaranteed. All right, Rodgers is look, um, trying to work out an extension with Green Bay. Said that he's not going to be signing anything till Kirk Cousins gets his deal and signs it. If I'm Green Bay, that's going to be tough. You're going to have to give Rodgers 85, 87 mil guaranteed. All right, that's a whole bunch of money right there. It's it's just crazy. Kirk Cousins is going to change the NFL, and I never would have thought Kirk Cousins would be that guy to change the NFL as far as fully guaranteed contracts go. But nonetheless, here we are. All right, Kirk Cousins is getting getting it done, all right? It's just, I don't know. I just, I, I don't know where all this value came from for Kirk Cousins. Like I said, I think he's a good quarterback. Don't think he's an $84 million guaranteed type quarterback, all right? I'm all, I'm good. I'm, I'm happy for Kirk Cousins. I'm all about these players getting paid. You've known that if you've listened to this show, but it's just crazy to me. But either way, nonetheless, looking like he's going to be ended up in Minnesota. Yeah, I got it right, all right? What does this mean for Minnesota? This means that they're probably Super Bowl contenders, all right? And you're probably thinking, well, you're just saying Kirk Cousins isn't a great quarterback. Yeah, you don't need a great quarterback to make it to the Super Bowl. Nick Foles just showed us that. And don't even tell me Nick Foles is a great quarterback because he won the Super Bowl with Philly. Nick Foles, pay attention to his career, all right? Nick Foles is good when he's got good players around him. He's not going to go out and be a Tom Brady type where he makes average players look great. He's not that type of player, all right? The Philadelphia Eagles won the Super Bowl, not Nick Foles. You go out and ask any Philadelphia fan who they prefer, Nick Foles or Carson Wentz, they're not hesitating to tell you it's Wentz that they prefer. All right. If Foles was this great quarterback, Philly would want to keep him. All right. But he's not. He's a good quarterback. But he's just not going to make your players around you better like a Carson Wentz will. All right. Carson Wentz by far better the quarterback than Foles. But either way, like I said, getting back to the point, you don't need a great, amazing quarterback to go out and win you a Super Bowl. You need a solid team now. That's where the NFL is shifting to. All right, we've been on this boat saying that the quarterback position of the quarterback is going down, and it is. All right, talent's going down. Now you need to start building up teams. Now you need running backs. Now you need receivers. Now you need defenses. Now you need offensive lines to compete. All right, and like I said, the NFL is heading more towards that. Teams are starting to build a whole lot more, and I'm getting ready for it. I mean, these teams are going to be extremely balanced facing off with each other. It's probably going to be the best year in the NFL, honestly, I think, in a while. All right, It's not just going to be uh, a couple of teams dominating each conference. Everyone is going to be good, I think, or at least competitive. So it's going to make the NFL a whole lot better than what it's been the last few years. All right, Really all for it. Like I said, getting back to the Vikings and Kirk Cousins. They very well could be the second best team in the NFC now. I'm going to keep saying that the Philly is the best team in the NFC. All right. They're the reigning Super Bowl champs. They've made moves to get better. Looks like they're going to be bringing back Patrick Robinson, signed Hologi Nada uh, to a one year deal to beef up that defensive line even more. Yeah, Hologi Nada isn't what he was with, um, what he was, what he was when he was with Baltimore. Was even pretty good for Detroit, but now he's past his prime. But either way, he's going to be a nice, he's going to be an improvement. He's going to help it. So you got that going on. And I think Philly, they signed someone else. I can't remember who else they signed, but either way, they brought in another person. But Philly is making moves to get better. So they're still my number one team in the NFC. But after that, I mean, it's a toss up between New Orleans, um, Minnesota, and, and LA, as in the Rams. All right. I almost said St. Louis, but it's still kind of weird thinking that the Rams play in uh, LA now. But either way, I mean, the Saints. Yeah, good team. Rams, I think Super Bowl contenders for sure. Going to get a Super Bowl within the next five years, I believe. I think they're that good. And then you got the Vikings who, 
got blown out by the Super Bowl champs, all right? Case Keenum had a bad year, and I think I remember last week I was talking about how I wasn't sure if Case Keenum or if Kirk Cousins was that much better than Case Keenum, but I did kind of come back to my senses, all right? Case Keenum and Kirk Cousins did pretty have, have uh, pretty identical years. I think Case Keenum's year was a little bit better. Kirk Cousins threw for more touchdowns, but uh, more interceptions also had a uh, lesser quarterback rating. But now that you think about it, Case Keenum had a Stephon Diggs, Adam Thielen, solid running back duo, and Kyle Rudolph behind him, around him. Then he had one of the best defenses in the league. Kirk Cousins had Ryan Grant, the receiver. All right. Josh Dotson, rookie, who showed flashes, I guess. Jamison Crowder, who's okay. Three different running backs, all of which got hurt. Uh, Jordan Reed, which was a non-factor all year because the guy can't stay healthy to save his life, okay? And then a uh, Vernon Davis, who is a shell of his old self because of Cam Chancellor. And a defense who was, mm, it's just eh, that's the defense right there, it's eh, it's okay. Nothing really to ride home about. So, I mean, Kirk Cousins pretty much did what Keith Keenum did with lesser talent around him. So I guess Kirk Cousins is the better quarterback out of those two right there, out of the, um, him and Keenum. So I like the move from Minnesota, all right? Defense continues to play well. you got Diggs and Thielen out there. Thielen is a perfect receiver for Cousins, all right? Diggs is going to play even better with Cousins, I believe. And if Dalvin Cook comes back from his, from his ACL injury and plays just as well as he was for the first four games of his season before he got hurt, the Vikings are a Super Bowl contending team, all right? They have a solid all-around team there. All they needed was a quarterback. And you got that in Kirk Cousins. Like I said, not great, not top five or anything like that, but can get the job done and throw for touchdowns. All right, so I like what they got going on there. So what the Vikings did, good on them getting Kirk Cousins. I understand it costs a lot of money, but you do what you got to do to get to a Super Bowl, and that's what they're trying to do. All right, then we got the Chicago Bears. As you've known, if you've been listening since last season, I've been on the Chicago Bears hype bandwagon. All right, not a, not a favorite team of mine by any means or anything like that, but... I think they're going to be good next season. I truly, truly do. I think that when it's all said and done, they're probably going to finish with eight wins, going to be that team that was in the hunt for the wild card all season. All right? I think the Browns are going to be that good. You got Mitch Trubisky, who I think is probably the second best, who I think is the second best quarterback from last year's draft, Deshaun Watson being the best. All right, You got Jordan Howard, who's a top 10 running back, near that top five area, near it, not there yet. About seven or eight, I guess you could say. Tariq Cohen, who I think is going to thrive in this new offense they got going on. All right. You got Allen Robinson, who they just signed. Huge addition right there. All right. You needed exactly that for Mitch Trubisky. You needed that top number one receiver. I was saying maybe you go get Calvin Ridley in the draft, but Allen Robinson is 10 times just as good. All right. Brought in Taylor Gabriel, who's going to be a nice little factor in that little um, college type offense, spread offense they're going to be running. All right, you got a defense who's young but can create turnovers and pretty much does not let you get far if you get the ball. All right, the Browns are going to be good. I think they could be like a Rams type. Not as good, but they're going to be a team where they could very well have one of the best offenses in the league. All right, I'm that high on the Browns right here. Or on the Bears, I should say. All right, Bears and Browns pretty much the same teams in different conferences. Both going to be playing extremely well after two bad seasons. Obviously, the Browns was a whole lot worse than the Bears, but nonetheless, you get my point. All right. But either way, getting back to it, I like the Bears a lot this season. I think they're going to be playing extremely well. Still need another receiver, most probably. Still, And now getting Allen Robinson, that allows you to go out and drive Quentin Nelson at number eight if he falls that far down. All right, And that's going to be even a bigger help to Mitch Trubisky and even to the center and right tackle on the team or left tackle, depending on which guard position Nelson plays. But I think he, I believe he plays right guard. All right, So I like what the Bears are doing. They're being smart. They're pretty much spending money when they need to. All right, the Bears are going to be a good team this season. And then you got the Green Bay Packers. Signed Jimmy Graham, but at Jordy Nelson's expense. Jordy Nelson has been cut by the Green Bay Packers. All right, and Jordy Nelson had a great career with Green Bay, but I just think his prime is way past them, and he's just a shell of what he once was. All right, I could be wrong, but I doubt it. It is what it is. But now with Jimmy Graham, his third team, Dudes play with amazing quarterbacks, all three teams he's played with. All right. Had Drew Brees, Russell Wilson, Aaron Rodgers now. All right. Do I think that Jimmy Graham is going to return to the old Jimmy Graham? No. If I had to say, is he scoring more than seven touchdowns this season? No. 
The over under is seven. I'll take the over, but it's going to be at eight, nine. He's not getting 10 this year. If he gets 10, I'm wrong, and I'll be surprised. But nonetheless, I just don't see it happening. I think Jimmy Graham, he's going to be a good addition for that team, and maybe it's just his Seattle years are kind of scaring me away from what to think as far as what he could do with Green Bay. Maybe that's all it is, all right? And that could be it. But I just, I'm not sure. It's like a wait and see type thing. It's like with a Richard Sherman, right? Not sure how well Richard Sherman truly is going to play with the 49ers. We got to wait and see once he steps on the field. And same with Jimmy Graham. I mean, is Aaron Rodgers going to make sure he's a big part of that offense? Or is he going to be feeding guys like Devontae Adams, who had a huge breakout year this season, right? Devontae Adams is far and away the best player on that offense besides Aaron Rodgers, all right? He's better than Jimmy Graham. That's no doubt. So it's going to be interesting to see how it all ends up for Green Bay. And as far as Jordy Nelson goes, I'm not sure that really there's much of a market for him. Miami's got two receivers they just signed. Green Bay's got their, or uh, Chicago's got their number one receiver. I don't, maybe he could fit in there as a number two, but I don't know. Green, or Chicago, I keep calling him, call him Green Bay. Chicago's a team who's young. Stay young. Don't bring in a, uh, Jordy Nelson unless you want him for like a veteran type presence there. All right, let's see who else needs receivers. I mean, San Francisco needs receivers, but Jordy Nelson isn't at number one anymore. Uh, he could end up in Baltimore. That team needs receivers. But like I said, it's just Jordy Nelson. I just don't think he's that good anymore. So it remains to be seen what happens with him. But as far as Jimmy Graham goes, could be great. But I just, I think he'll be pretty much eight touchdown time guy, not too many yards. So we'll see how it all ends up. But either way, that's going to wrap it up for this segment. Next up, we're going to be talking AFC East. We're going to be talking Dolphins, Bills, Jets. I'm probably not going to be talking Patriots too much. So that's how the next segment's going to go. So stay tuned and we'll be right back. Check out the show that's built on the MMA. From the UFC to extreme cage fighting, they got the fights covered. Check out the GSMC MMA podcast. Get the latest news on past or upcoming fights. Join us as we talk to and about some of the biggest names in the MMA, past, present, and future. When it's the fight game, there's just one show to check out. GSMCpodcast.com backslash MMA dash podcast. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit GSMC. GSMCpodcast.com for more info. to the GSMC football podcast. So far today, we pretty much talked about Richard Sherman going to San Francisco, talked about Cleveland. In that last segment, we talked about Minnesota landing Kirk Cousins. We talked about, uh, what else we talked about? We talked about Allen Robinson going to the Bears. They got Taylor Gabriel also, which is going to be a nice little addition for them. And then you got the Green Bay Packers signing Jimmy Graham to a three-year deal and cutting Jordy Nelson, all right? It looked like New Orleans and Jimmy Graham were going to end up uh, reuniting again, but out of the blue, it goes boom. Green Bay signs Jimmy Graham to a three-year deal, so the little reunion is never happening. All right, so there's that. For this segment, we're going to be talking some AFC East football, all right? The ultimate division, and I say that sarcastically. This division has always been quite something. It's been Patriots up there at the top. Then Miami, Buffalo, New York pretty much fight for incompetence. All right. That's how it's always been, at least since I've been alive. All right. But either way, we got moves to talk about. So let's get into it. Let's talk about the Jets first. What in the world are the Jets doing? All right. They, it, earlier today, it looked like, which is, uh, today's what, Tuesday, 4th, 13th, I believe it is. Yeah, Tuesday, 13th. Today, it looked like that the Jets were going to be signing Teddy Bridgewater. I was like, yeah, nice little solid move for them. I mean, you missed out on Kirk Cousins, so I guess go out and get Teddy Bridgewater. All right, have him be the quarterback to pretty much plays until the rookie that you draft is ready to develop. All right, so we're going to do that. All of a sudden, a couple of hours later, Josh McCown signs with the Jets for a one-year deal and is told that he's going to be the starter this season. And I'm just like, wait, huh? What do you mean? 
uh, Teddy Bridgewater was supposed to go there. Turns out, nope, not happening. All right, so it looks like Josh McCown is going to be the quarterback for that team, and obviously that means no Teddy B for the New York Jets, all right, because I doubt Teddy B is going there to be a backup, and I doubt the Jets want him there if they're making Josh McCown the starter, all right? So whatever quarterback they draft is going to sit for a year, all right, or at least until Josh McCown stinks it up, which last year, I mean, he didn't. Josh McCown was playing really well for the Jets, so there's that. That was a bit of a head-scratcher there. And then they go and they make even more of a head scratcher. They sign Isaiah Crowell. What's the difference between Bailao Powell and Isaiah Crowell? There isn't one. Isaiah Crowell was supposed to be the guy in Cleveland. Couldn't even do that. All right. I don't understand what the Jets are doing at all. And it makes no sense. Go out and get the kid from LSU. Go out and get any rookie, ba- uh, rookie running back in the draft. Why are you going to draft or sign Isaiah Crowell? He's no different than Bailao Powell. All right? The Jets need to get out of their own way for once. Just for once. All right? And I understand they play in New York, so they're a bit overrated and stuff like that. People like to talk about them like they're this great franchise. All right? Believe it or not, Joe Namath is probably the most overrated quarterback of all time. But either way, I mean, I don't like what the Jets are doing at all. I don't. Not whatsoever. Okay? It just makes no sense to me. I don't get the. I don't get bringing in Isaiah Crowell at all. It makes no sense. And I mean, who knows? Maybe the Jets are just dumb enough to sign McCown to a one-year deal, bring in Big Bridgewater, and still draft a rookie quarterback. Wouldn't that be something? That would be the ultimate Jets move there. But either way, I mean, they missed out on Cousins. And how much of a shot did they really even have with Cousins, honestly? Like, honestly, how much of a shot did they even have? They didn't even, they're not even going to get a meeting with him, I don't think. Since it's F. Schefter's reporting that he's going to be going to Minnesota. I mean, come on. Change it up for once, New York. Do something. Or at least the Giants, they have a plan. At least the Giants are, the Giants have won two Super Bowls in the 2000s. From they won 2000 and what 2007 2008 2012 also Jets what have you done you're the New York Knicks all right yeah the Jets are the New York Knicks Knicks if you follow basketball most overrated franchise in the history of sports honestly all right but either way Jets not really making too much sense here they're probably gonna mess up that quarterback pick I bet all right as far as the Bills go they're the last team to go out and get a veteran quarterback they haven't signed one yet. Now it's looking like if somehow if Teddy Bridgewater doesn't end up with the Jets, which he shouldn't, it's probably going to be him or McCarron that's playing for the Bills this season uh, until the back court, until the rookie quarterback is d- done developing, right? Because now the Bills have the number twelve pick in the draft, traded Corey Glenn, Cody Glenn, whatever his name is, left tackle to the Bengals for their twenty first pick and a couple of other picks. So now they have the twelfth pick, and it's looking like they're going to pull a Philadelphia um, Philadelphia Eagles. All right, looks like they're going to be trying to trade up into that top five spot, maybe move up with Denver. All right, switch up with Denver because they're going to have to get ahead of New York because New York's going to be taking a quarterback. So now the uh, Bills pretty much now they got rid of Tyrod, they got to. Um, Bring in McCarron, or they got to bring in Bridgewater. And whatever quarterback they bring in is going to struggle. The Bills have no weapons besides LaShawn McCoy. Charles Clay's getting older. You have no receivers. All right, Kelvin Benjamin, as I love to say it, no better than a number two receiver. All right, so the Bills really got to fix up that entire offense before they even think about getting back to the playoffs or anything like that. So the Bills pretty much, they got to figure out they want McCarron or Bridgewater, and then they got to figure out way to get into the top five figure out who they're going to take and they got to figure out to get uh, figure out a way to get some receivers so as far as the bills go i don't know all right and then there's the miami dolphins all right traded away jarvis landry to the cleveland browns for a fourth pick this year seventh round pick next year gonna be cutting in dominic and sue all right now they're trying to do a whole culture change and at one point, I thought, might as well just trade the quarterback if you're doing a full-on rebuild. But it turns out, they're not trying to do a full-on rebuild. Looks like they're trying to make some win-now moves. All right? They signed Albert Wilson, the receiver out of um, out of Kansas City. I like that move for Miami there. All right? And obviously, they signed, uh, they signed Amendola too. But with those two guys, they don't come close to Jarvis Landry. All right? They don't. But I like Wilson because he's quick. And he showed like he's 
he didn't really get the ball as much with Kansas City because of the fact that you're playing with Travis Kelsey, Tyreek Hill, and Kareem Hunt. But I think he could do something in Miami. All right? Like I said, not going to be nearly the same producer that Jarvis Landry is, but I think he could do something. And as far as Amendola goes, I'm kind of iffy on that whole signing there because of the fact that I think Amendola was a product of Tom Brady. All right, Did play pretty well with the Rams before that, but elevated his game big time with Tom Brady. And now you're going to Ryan Tannehill where... Ten Hill has shown that he could be a decent, good quarterback, but just hasn't put it all together. So I'm pumping the brakes on the whole Amendola thing. Not really sure how well he's going to play there. But as far as it all goes, like, what's Miami's plan? Now you got Wilson. Now you got Amendola. You have Grant, Stills, and Parker there. That's five receivers. All right. Are they going to be playing some four receiver sets out there? Or are they um, bringing in Wilson and Amendola in order to trade Parker? All right. Parker with Miami has been the ultimate bust. All right. Disappointment more so than bust. He's shown flashes of what he could be, but the dude can't stay healthy. For some reason, only likes to produce during garbage time, I feel. So maybe they package him, the 11th pick, try and trade up um, before Buffalo does. Maybe that's their plan. Maybe they're still trying to look at a quarterback. Maybe Breaker Mayfield drops to them. Maybe Josh Rosen drops to them. But let's see. The Browns still need a quarterback, but I'm not so sure that they take a quarterback with the fourth pick. So let's see. You can have the Browns who could take a quarterback. Let's say they take Darnold, okay? Then the Bills trade up with the Broncos. They take Rosen. Then the Jets take Allen. That leaves Mayfield or Lamar Jackson for the Dolphins. And... Don't sleep on the Giants taking a quarterback if Barkley goes number one. It's either going to be a quarterback or Quentin Nelson. All right. And it's kind of seemed like the Giants really don't want to take a rookie quarterback. So you could see more so they take a like a Mason Rudolph type in the second round or third round whenever they can. So the Dolphins very well could have their choice at a Lamar Jackson or Baker Mayfield. And let's say this for Miami if, um, if, uh, Roquan Smith is available at number 11. I say you take him and then you take Lamar Jackson in the second round. All right. That's what I would do if I was Miami's GM. But I think they really do like Baker Mayfield. I think they got a meeting with him sometime soon. It might even be tonight. But either way, I mean, I'm not sure what Miami's plan exactly is. Like I said, when you trade Landry and you cut Sue, it seems like it's a full on rebuild. All right. But now I guess they're acting like it's just a culture change and. They're still trying to win games now. So, like I said, it's just it's just confusing to see what Miami really has up their sleeve. All right. They got to be making some other moves. They still need a tight end. I mean, the last couple of years, they've been going with tight ends who are old and pretty much past their prime, and it hasn't worked out. I mean, you got Julius Thomas, Anthony Fasano. At one point, they signed Dustin Keller to try and fix it up, but his career ended with a just pretty much got his knee blown up. And, I mean, just the Dolphins just really haven't had a solid tight end. You got to find a guard. Maybe Josh Sitton fits in with that team. And they need linebackers. So it's going to be real interesting to see what Miami's got going on. But as of right now, I mean, the division still belongs to the Patriots. And there's no doubt about that. So, I don't know. They still got a whole bunch of more moves they got to make before we even know exactly what Miami's plan is. But that's all I got to say about that. The same when we talked about what? Jets, no clue what they're doing. Bills, they got to fix up that offense, even if they do get a quarterback. And as far as Miami goes, they got some type of plan they're trying to work out. But it's just real confusing as to what they got going on. So that's going to wrap it up for this segment. Next up, we're going to talk about the Broncos getting Case Keenum, talk about the Chiefs getting Sammy Watkins, and pretty much talk about, I guess, Sam Bradford going to the Cardinals and anything else that's intrigued me as far as free agency has gone down. So stay tuned, and we'll be right back. Check out the show built around the women of MMA. From the UFC to the extreme cage fighting, we got the fights covered. Listen. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. The latest news of upcoming fights, discussions of previous matches. Join us as we talk to and about the biggest names in women's mixed martial arts. Past, present, and future. When it's the women's fight game, you know where to listen to. The Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast.
Alright, and welcome back to the GSMC Football Podcast. This is the last, last segment of our, I guess we could call it a free agency special show. All right, today we talked about the Browns 49ers, talked about uh, the AFC East and the NFC North. Now we're going to be talking AFC West and pretty much anything else that we've missed so far. Pretty much cleaning up what else happened to free agency. So that's how the show is going to end. So let's get into it. All right, Denver Broncos were the team in the beginning looking like they were going to end up getting Kirk Cousins as far as like before anyone knew exactly what was going on with Kirk Cousins, like what teams he liked or whatever. So, yeah, looking like they were going to be the favorites. Turns out we're never really close and never really close to getting him. All right. It's just it is what it is. All right. So here we are now. Who did they end up with? They ended up with Case Keenum and actually we're the first team to sign a quarterback. All right. So now Case Keenum is the starting quarterback for the Denver Broncos. I guess it turns out John Elway finally realized, hmm, maybe I could play the position really well, but I can't really uh, scout it very well. All right. Dude is terrible at picking quarterbacks. Just awful. All right. John Elway has no clue what he's doing when it comes to picking quarterbacks. And that's fine. All right. People are yelling at me, oh, it's John Elway. What do you know? I know that John Elway can't pick quarterbacks. That's what I know. All right. Paxton Lynch, Brock Osweiler, Trevor Simeon. Yeah. Just didn't work out. He wasted two Super Bowl contending years with the Broncos. All right. The last two years wasted away. Okay. Absolutely wasted. Any other GM would be, or any other guy like that would be fired. All right, but since it's John Elway, he's not. If Case Keenum doesn't do well with the Broncos this year, John Elway's got to go. He does. All right, I don't care if it's John Elway. I don't care if it's Tom Brady when he retires and he becomes the VP of player operations or whatever John Elway's position is with the Broncos, if Tom Brady's doing with the Patriots. If you fail like that for three years and waste away your team's prime years where they could be competing in Super Bowls and playoffs, you got to go. All right? I could care less that John Elway won two Super Bowls with the Broncos. That means absolutely nothing to me. Let me tell you. All right? You're there to do a job. And if you're not doing that job well, then hit the curb, go home. There's no place for you here. All right? Like I said, if it doesn't work out this year, you can't bring him back. You can't. It would be idiotic to. But here we are. Case Keenum's now that quarterback. Couldn't even get Kirk Cousins. All right. Case Keenum, not exactly sure how well he's going to do with the Broncos. Did well in the Viking system for one year. All right. One year. Didn't do anything with the Texans. Didn't do anything with the Rams. All right. But here he is now getting paid 20 mil a year. And boy, oh boy. Must be nice. Let me tell you. All right. But, I mean, Case Keenum could succeed with Denver. It just all depends on how that defense plays. Case Keenum isn't going to go out and make me a better player. He's not going to go out and make anyone else a better player. He's a nice quarterback, but he just doesn't have that. All right, Tom Brady makes people around him better. Aaron Rodgers makes people around him better. Russell Wilson makes people around him better. All right, Kirk Cousins is not that. Kirk Cousins does not make people around him better. All right. Case Keenum does not make people around him better. Case Keenum needs good players around him to succeed. And I think I'm really selling Kirk Cousins short. That dude had nothing to work with uh, with uh, Washington. So I'm going to take it easy on Kirk Cousins a bit. All right, but either way, like I said, Kirk, Case Keenum, he needs Demarius Thomas out there. He needs Emmanuel Sanders. He's going to need a running back. The offensive line needs to get fixed up. And like I said, it all comes down to how well that defense plays. All right? You know Von Miller is going to get his. But how well is that secondary going to perform? How well is the rest of that D-line going to perform? And how well is that linebacking corps going to perform? I believe in the defense. I think they'll be fine. I think, honestly, that Case Kingdom is going to play well with Denver. All right? But I'm, I'm just raising the question here. Okay? I mean, was it Pat Shermer who made him play well? Or was it Case Keenum who made Case Keenum play well? It will be remain to be seen once the season starts. All right? There's a bunch of... We got to wait till they hit the field type players to see how good the signings actually are. Richard Sherman. All right. Case Keenum. And I know there was another one we were talking about in this segment too. All right. But either way, we'll see how it all ends up. But I mean, Denver finally, it's an upgrade from what they had the last couple of years. I'll tell you that much. It is. Okay. It's a definite upgrade. So we just got to wait and see 
If Case Keenum comes back, plays how he did last year, Denver hit a home run with this, okay? You got a quarterback who honestly had a better season than Kirk Cousins, paid him cheaper. But now it's just pretty much, like I said, you got to wait and see what exactly you got going on. So we'll see how it all ends up. But for Denver, then defense needs to step up. And I think they will because they're going to be on the field a whole lot less. All right. Because like I said, Case Keenum is an upgrade from what they've had the last two years. But now it's pretty much playoffs or bust for Denver. Denver didn't make playoffs and struggle. Like if Denver's an 8-8 eight and eight team, you can't bring John away back. You just can't. All right. So we'll see what you got going on there. And I know John Elway isn't technically like the GM or whatever, but he's the face of that team. That's just how it goes. So there's that. Now let's move on to another team in the AFC West, the Kansas City Chiefs. Paid Tammy Watkins a whole lot of money. All right? A whole bunch of money. Okay? And I don't think Sammy Watkins is worth all that money. I see the elite term be thrown around with Sammy Watkins. How? Where? Show me. Show me one season where Sammy Watkins was elite. All right? Show me two seasons where Sammy Watkins was elite. You're elite. You're doing it year after year. Okay? Sammy Watkins hadn't been doing it year after year. It's just, I don't know. I don't I don't see it. I just think he's a, a fast receiver out of Clemson. All right? DeAndre Hopkins, he should be thanking DeAndre Hopkins. Every receiver that comes out of Clemson, I feel people expect to be like DeAndre Hopkins. All right? But I don't see it. I don't see Sammy Watkins being an elite. He's a nice little receiver in the league, but I just don't see it. I wouldn't give him all that money. Dude's making like, what, 16, 14 to 16 million a year? Are you kidding me? Really? All right? He's not putting up 14 to 16 million dollar year numbers. Okay? Not at all. But we're going to give that to him? I just... I, 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 I don't know. I don't get it. Alright, let's see what we got going on here. With the Rams. 39 receptions. 593 yards. 8 touchdowns. Touchdown numbers are pretty solid there. Alright, let me see what exactly the contract was that they gave him. Okay. Because maybe... Like, I know they gave him some absurd type money. Alright, let's see. We got... Sp- Spot track, one of my favorite websites too. They got all the different contracts up there. So we got three years, 48 mil, 16 mil average salary, $30 million guaranteed. All right. Let's see. With Buffalo 2016, 28 receptions, 430 yards, two touchdowns. And tell me all I want. Oh, he was hurt. That's cool. All right. Is a receiver. 2015, 60 receptions, 1,000 yards, six, nine touchdowns. 2014, 65 receptions, 982 yards, 6 touchdowns. You're telling me those stats warrant $30 million guaranteed? All right, 16 mil on average because of the incentives and all that? Are you kidding me? Really? No, it doesn't. He's no better than Tyreek um, Tyreek Hill. If anything, he's just a lesser version of Tyreek Hill. All right? I just, I don't know. I don't I don't see the hype. I just don't. And maybe he's going to prove me wrong this year. But I just don't see it. I don't get it. So, Kansas City, I hope, maybe it's just they're expecting Patrick Mahomes to make him better with that um, cannon of an arm he has. Maybe. Who knows. But I just don't see him being that elite 30 get million guaranteed uh, type receiver. But either way, there it is. All right. So, there's that. Other free agent news, Sam Bradford going to be signing with the Cardinals or intends to sign with the Cardinals. Going to be getting 20 mil. I think it's like 15 mil guaranteed, 5 mil for incentives. Probably if you pay, if you stay healthy for more than 12 games, we'll give you that 5 million. All right, Sam Bradford is the ultimate professor finesser, right? Finessed his way all his career and got paid, all right? Pretty much paying for what he could be. And the dude's been in the league for so long, all right? I don't get it. I do not. I think he's getting paid more than what he was getting in Minnesota, and he barely played for Minnesota. All right, had one year with Minnesota last year. This year got hurt. I don't know. Either way, he's getting paid. I do like the pickup for the Cardinals, though. I mean, it's not like Sam Bradford is a bad quarterback. The dude just can't stay healthy. I think he fits in well with that offense. I think he's going to do well with Larry Fitzgerald, and David Johnson is going to take a lot of the burden off of Sam Bradford's back. So I do like what they did there. 
The Cardinals, if Sam Bradford stays healthy, could be a competitive team. I think they finished, what, 8-8 eight and eight last year and had Kurt, um, Carson Palmer leave uh, middle of the season with a broken arm. Drew Stan, Blaine Gabbard out there. Cardinals got a solid team. They got a perfect, they get the perfect mix of young players and veterans on that defense. You got Larry Fitzgerald, who hasn't taken a step back yet. And David Johnson, when he's out there, top two running back in the league. So I do like that. So I oh don't know. We'll see how it all ends up for Arizona. But I just wanted to mention that. There's a bunch of other free agent signings we got to talk about. But we're going to save that for Thursday, right? Going to space it out a bit because, like I said, there's a whole bunch left that we got um, out there. So that's going to wrap it up for today's show. Today we talked about the Browns, 49ers, the NFC North signings, and AFC East signings. And then for this segment, talked about the Broncos and Chiefs. And then we mentioned uh, Sam Bradford. So thanks for listening to the GSMC Football Podcast. As always, I am your host, Jesse Tapia. Like I said, we'll be back on Thursday, so stay tuned, and we'll talk to you later. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.